Hello again, Gianna Monique here. I'm such a um, fan of content creators, but in terms of like production value, uh, uh, um, there's a lot to be desired on my part. But I'm coming around to just get in the vein of producing. Um, so producing content regardless of like editing and things like that. So here we are. Um, I'm really excited to start reading uh, Soul Space. Soul Space by Zoran Balrez, I believe that's how it's pronounced. And um, it's about feathering your nest consciously. And I've had some great realizations here in community. First is very hard when you and or your ancestors are kind of having to be shuttled from place to place to place whether it's financial or circumstantial or you know time limited whatever the case and it's interesting my people on my dad's side anyway I know a little bit more about just two generations back not that far but my people on my dad's side were Okies and came from Oklahoma, Midwest, and came to California. And my dad's generation and the generation before him had pretty stable home. And then on my mom's side, oh yeah, same with my great grandma, because my great grandma came over too, right? And on my mom's side, I don't know that much about our background, but my grandma on my mom's side and my grandpa, even though we lost my grandpa early in my experience before I was born, they had a pretty stable home life. However, in the homes themselves, a lot of things went down, you know? One small example, not small in scope, but just one example of the many, is that um, my grandma lived in Watts during the Watts riots and she refused to leave as many elderly people and families did they refused to leave so it's really a trip how even if you have a stable home and you're not nomadic there can be so much tum tumult in the home and a lot of that reflects in clutter and in my case, I don't think I've had a stable home since I left my family home. So that was pretty young age. And so just acquiring these things I think I need for comfort or, you know, kind of has gone beyond the material, but it'd be either things for work or creativity and I would always just have this beautiful hope that I would like plant roots and what have you but not many of us in this time especially right now we're not very rooted so even just to have a pod of community like I do right now is such a blessing and is giving me a lot more bandwidth to think about why I have all these things a lot of them just because I've had to pick up and move and pick up and move and I've been in so many situations where people were abusive a lot of times one might call something um passive aggressive or you know awkward or whatever but I mean aggression is abuse you know and having to leave under duress is real for a lot of people and not just once but many times So then trauma gets like baked into the things you're carrying with you. And it's really a, a, such a journey just to let go and to remember what it's like to feel like you are allowed to beautify your space as small as it is. You know, a lot of the things I'm going through now downsizing are 
like creative things that I don't just want to throw away and then some are records and things like that so it's basically like I've been carrying a storage unit with me at every new space and people in my life have reacted to it in so many different ways but mostly it's been through the lens of privilege of course so like laughing at bags you have with you just laughing you know because it's funny it's awkward and it makes people uncomfortable going through and downsizing it's noisy it moves chi around so like makes a lot of un people uncomfortable so the first thing they latch onto is like making fun of it you know not realizing like maybe you've had the privilege to have stable things or nice bags or like hire a moving company but a lot of people don't get that or family to help you move or uh, proximity to family and friends a community to help you move there's so many things that one just doesn't think about or I just didn't think about just having to like uproot and go to another place there's so many things like having savings for a deposit or a new place or having savings to like do a down payment on what a condo or a house or whatever or a van or like even a you know even a van or a new car or like if you live in your car or whatever it's very it's very trippy to especially to come from places where people were raised to you know work hard and then you get your home and then you know you just stay there you know so to be nomadic whether it's by choice or by force or whatever is a real different trip and if you are empathic let's say empathic leaning because everybody's empathic you know but if you are empathic leaning you just like get to a point where you like might want to blame yourself for having all these circumstances and like how you handle them and you know it's almost like a sin to be to not have wealth it's a sin to not have the appearance of having everything together you know western culture is very um fickle that way it's very fickle that way like for instance, if you're like a baller or have a lot of money, but you're like messy, then it's like, oh, you know, you meant to do that. And oh, you just don't care. You're punk rock or whatever. So it's very interesting. I say all this to bring up, you know, just a lot of the things that we have around clutter. It's just a lot of it is just like not feeling you have the bandwidth to to deal with things, so feeling very alone or put upon, you know. And there is a crux of beauty in thinking. It's like your inner child thinking that it needs to have some sense of stability to hold on to something. Or there's something important I don't want it to get lost or what have you. And so just having a real beautiful dialogue with my inner child, which is the feeling self. The inner child is a feeling self of like. There is very, very little that one needs. And intellectually, I know this, but just kind of being pushed from place to place to place, whatever the circumstances were, or relationships were, just not having the time to deal with it. And so, okay, I decided not to pay for a storage unit anymore. So now it's like, oh, now I get to look at and deal with and decide about all of these things. And to do so lovingly and without judgment, even if other people in my lives harbor judgment, is such a... It's wonderful to do because I just think of all the love that I have shared with my partners and my friends and family members. Just helping them get their things together, helping them feather their nest helping them pick out things they want to beautify their spaces or their cars or whatever and not thinking like, oh, I could do that too, you know? You can cut out images from a magazine. It doesn't have to be like a, a limited edition Warhol or something. You know, there is a philosopher, a writer, his name's William W. Walter. And um, he's a metaphysician, and one of his students asked him one time, you know, why bother with wearing makeup 
or, you know, getting dressed up or whatever. And it's a good rhetorical question. And he said, well, you paint your barn, don't you? You know, it's not something you have to do, but like you can have nice things. And it's not about wealth, although abundance and wealth is a beautiful outpicturing of soul. You know, it doesn't, it's not just for the haves it's not just for the one percent and that's such a trick that culture plays on us and sometimes partners and people in our lives will play on us and it's so tempting people want to feel superior to you and wealth is like one very quick way to feel superior or the illusion of wealth or having you know and this whole thing around bags carrying bags with you you know oh i don't want to be with someone or have friends who have baggage or like you need to be with like a successful, your crew needs to be successful and stuff like that. And it's, it's just so unfortunate that sometimes, you know, the soul gets lost and falls by the wayside. You know, sometimes we just need that little encouragement, that knowing that you can have, and you can have nice things. You can be in a peaceful space. And I've noticed just, the more I'm letting go of all these things from years in storage and stuff, like I'm more apt to dance in my home. I'm more apt to do yoga in my home and stretch and breathe. And I still have quite a ways to go, quite a ways to go. And uh, with uh, my friend in community today, we went on a recycling run um, for the space where I am right now. And just to see like the care that you need to take to separate things out and you know gift that forward how you can really reduce and reuse and recycle and like what that looks like on the ground you know and not having this mentality of like someone else will take care of it and I think that's sometimes what a lot of clutter is about but in society, we have such a judgment about it. Sometimes it's just purely logistical of like, I don't feel comfortable in this new space. People are making me wrong for trying to get my affairs in order. You know, I can't hire someone or maybe it's too embarrassing to hire someone. And just all of this knitting and stitching together of love within yourself that it's important to do. Um, we don't get a lot of support or if there is support, you know, it's like, well, you can pay for support. You can pay for someone to come in and organize. It's not about organizing really. It's just about prioritizing and the organ the organization flows from that, you know? And if you don't think you're worthy or you're, you know, you've just been getting this messaging or I've been just been getting this messaging all this time of like, you know, a lot of the mocking or just like you just don't have it together or whatever, whatever the narrative is that someone is trying to put on you. There's it gives you a huge disincentive to even try and get your affairs in order. So I'm just grateful for the resin of being able to tap into meditation and prayer and doing work in community with manifesting and yoga and whatever the tool is it doesn't have to be those things it can be asking for help it can be creativity and art all of these things i've been doing it can be therapy whatever it is there comes a point a critical mass point where it's just your time to just let the judgment go a lot of the judgment that we carry isn't even ours it never was but just comes from others words that are just said in haste or just because they're carrying forth some narrative that doesn't have anything to do with you and if you're letting it go, but you still feel insecure or sad or some emotion that tethers you to it, then you haven't fully let it go. And so it doesn't free you up to really let these other things go. Having things is a privilege of sorts, but if you look around, you know, if you've ever been without a home, and I have been at various phases in my life, even people without a home, they have things. They'll gather things in a cart, 
a lot of times they might even have like animals like even more than one animal they'll have a backpack so you think about it things in our experience are just a reflection they're a reflection of what's important to us furniture and things like that that's a reflection of convenience it's not like you need the things but it's also like it's also not like you can't have the things you know so anyway to get back to this book not sponsored of course i'm just like um happy about this book i finally have some breathing room to read it and work through it and feel like really nice about it i have started feathering my nest but doing that at the same time you're downsizing is very intriguing and um you know keeping it nice while you're downsizing is also intriguing when you have a tiny home um or you know like a camper space or whatever so i'm going to keep you posted on my progress and I'm grateful to be working um, through this now. And that is all for now. And thanks for um, indulging me. <laughs>